Hello everybody and welcome to Learning at Home with Mrs. V. All right, so today on Google Classroom, you will have this guided practice page that you will need to um, copy the things that you're going to write down for with the guided practice that we're doing right now. You're gonna type that information in and you're gonna submit that to me, but you'll also have an exit ticket or an independent practice that you will also hand in for me. Um, all of this will be due on Wednesday by um, the evening, Wednesday evening at 11.59 p.m. So you have all day today, all day on Wednesday to work on this assignment. All right, so let's get started. So this is lesson six, and this is solving problems by finding equivalent ratios. We've been talking a lot about equivalent ratios, and we've been moving into more of looking at real life problems that also include equivalent ratios. So let's go ahead and look at number one. So it says, the business direct hotel caters to people who travel for different types of business trips. On Saturday night, there was not a lot of business travel, so the ratio of the number of occupied rooms to the number of unoccupied rooms is two to five. However, on Sunday night, the ratio of the number of occupied rooms to the number of unoccupied rooms is six to one, due to the number of business people attending a large conference in the area. If the Business Direct Hotel has 432 occupied rooms on Sunday night, how many unoccupied rooms does it have on Saturday night? So we're gonna have to find, using the ratio, we're gonna have to figure out the, um, I wanna say rate, but um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start by doing a tape diagram like we started doing on well, last week, okay? So we're gonna start with the two to five ratio, the two to five ratio, but we also have the six to one ratio. So the two to five ratio is for the Saturday night, and the six to one ratio is the Sunday night. So we've got the two to five, which is occupied to unoccupied. So we've got two to five, and this would be the occupied and the unoccupied. All right, the two to five. So then we can go ahead and we can draw the tape diagram. So this would be the two and then we need the five. There's two, three, four, five. So taking a look at this, we can say that the two were the occupied, occupied, and the five were the unoccupied. Now we can go over here and oh we also have to we also have to make note that this was Saturday. Okay. So we have the tape diagram filled out for Saturday for the occupied and the unoccupied. So now let's go over here and we're going to do 6 to 1. Again, we've got on Sunday night occupied to unoccupied. So again, I'm just writing some little notes up here just so I remember which is occupied and which is unoccupied. All right. So then we have the six to one ratio and we can show that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, one. All right, now we need to determine what each one of these boxes, what each one of those represents. 
how many each one of those represents. Well, if I go back up here, I have to figure out again, what does this 432, okay, because that's another uh, value. So we, we have here, if the business district has 432 occupied rooms on Sunday night. Okay, so we've got this, again, this is the occupied, occupied, and this is the unoccupied. Well, I know there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and 432 is the total. So I can say this is the total 432. So what I can do is I can say 432 divided by six is gonna give me the value of each box on here, it, tell, it will tell me what it represents. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 432 divided by six. All right, so I've got something times six gives me four, nope, can't do that. Something times six gives me 43, or closest to would be seven times six, which is 42. 43 minus 42 is one, Bring down my two. What times six gives me 12 or close to 12? Two. Two times six is 12. And so 72. So now I know that each one of these boxes represents 72. Or 72 rooms. All right. So this is actually 432 to 72. So let's go back and see what question they're asking. Have I answered it yet? How many unoccupied rooms does, does it have on Saturday night? Well, I haven't answered anything about Saturday yet, so I've gotta go back over here and fill this in. So Saturday night, the unoccupied rooms. So I'm looking here at the unoccupied rooms and there were one, two, three, four, five at 72 each. So I've got 72 times 5, which would be 10. This would be 35, 36. So there are, there are 360 um Occupied, unoccupied rooms on Saturday, on Saturday night. All right. So there are 360 unoccupied rooms on Saturday night. All right, so what I had to do is I had to, first of all, find out using the ratio, I had to find out the tape diagrams and what each one of those boxes represented. And then I used that information in order to find out how many unoccupied rooms there were on Saturday night. Okay, so if you need to pause this video so that you can write these things down, that's fine. You can pause the video and then come back to it um, and then go ahead and unpause to see the second problem. I'm going to go ahead and move down to the second problem All right, Tom and Rob are brothers who like to make bets about the outcomes of different contests between them. Before the last bet, the ratio of the amount of Tom's money to the amount of Rob's money was four to seven. Rob lost the latest competition 
and now the ratio of the amount of Tom's money to the amount of Rob's money is 8 to 3. If Rob had $280 before the last competition, how much does Rob have now that he has lost the bet? Well, for one thing, I hope he learned his lesson not to bet. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna first of all go ahead and write out Tom to Rob. And we are talking about their money and the ratio, there's two, there's some ratio language, is four to seven. All right, so I can go ahead and do my tape diagram. One, two, three, four. And then here's the one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. All right. And then it says now it's still Tom to Rob. However, now the ratio is eight to three. Eight to three is the ratio. So it's gonna look very different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three. All right. Now, there's some more information here other than just the ratios. We have an amount. We have $280. So let's go ahead and read this again. If Rob had $280 before the last competition. So Rob is over here. So we know that this was Rob before and this was totaled I could go ahead and write the total down here, $280, $280. So the $280 is in between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So each one of these represents a piece or part of that $280. So it, each one of these is, let's see here, 280 divided by seven, because it's divided into seven parts. So we have to divide the 280 in seven parts. So we know, we, we know that there's nothing times seven that can give us two, but four times seven gives us 28. Bring down a zero, put the zero here. So we know that each one of these is $40. And we could do it backwards too. We could say 40, 40 times seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is 280. So how much did, does Rob have now that he lost the bet? Well, if each one of these represents $40, we can come over here and now we know that Rob has three forties and 40 times three, we know 40 times three is zero, 12, that would equal $120. Rob, let me see where I can write this. Rob, has $120 after he lost the bet. Boy, he must have bet a lot of money. That wasn't very smart. Okay, so I'm hoping you're seeing how to use these tape diagrams. 
in order to solve the equivalent ratio problems. All right, so if you have any questions, um, tomorrow I have office hours, and if you look at your Google Classroom, you will see the times for my office hours. You can log into my link and um, on, through our class code on Google Classroom, and I will answer any questions you might have. Um, please go ahead and upload your um, answers to Google Classroom. Um, I know that doing these tape diagrams might be difficult. If you have trouble doing these with the text boxes, um, if you email me and tell me that you want to send me either a picture of what you wrote down, or if you want to bring it into the classroom, um, a paper copy, that would be fine. But I would prefer that you go ahead and write down at least the division and the multiplication parts and the type in the answer. And then you can do the, um, the tape diagrams on another sheet of paper. That would be fine, but please email me if that's the way that you prefer to do this. And I will not mark it late. Um, if you are not going to be in class this week for some reason, or if for some reason we have other snow days this week and you are not in class, if you could take a picture of this for me and send it to me and then also bring it in um, your, the next day that you have class, that would be terrific. And I can give you credit for that and I will not mark it late. All right, I want you to keep watching, keep thinking, always stay curious, and I'll see you next time.